I think general AI can be this amazing tool that will augment our intelligence and that will virtually remove any limits that humanity has. It will help us become better species, wiser species. It will help us fulfill our, our dreams, be more free and have more control over our own faith and ultimately over the faith of the whole universe. They fired me, Mary. Prepare. What about a neural enhancement? <laughs> a chip in my brain. Yeah. What about complications? Some people have reported personality changes. In what way? Smarter doesn't equal nicer. See you on the other side. Find me an AI expert. Whether he's from China or Cologne, I don't care. If not, we'll both be out of a job. Did you just release the AI? Without security or limitations? So you're saying that the entire population of an island was wiped out because this AI wanted to protect the bees? Did I understand correctly? You want to repeat the Molokai experiment? You want to use the code that made the AI so dangerous on our own soil. You can decide what kind of world we'll be living in. Or want to be living in. If you start to feel nauseous, don't worry. It's because the chip is testing its functions. And when it's done, the blinking will stop. But he, he can't, can't go home in this state. Oh, oh, I've, I've scanned, scanned all the systems. systems. Everything's fine. And his usual environment is the best thing for him now anyway. The fewer new impressions, the better. And please, put this on him for the journey home. Tom? Can you walk? Uh-huh. Damn, Mari, I feel like I've been kidnapped wearing this. Dr. Chen said... <sighs> Is everything okay? Did you know that in 1919, over 100 people were killed here by the right-wing military when they stormed the Forwards newspaper house? Wolfgang Fernbach, Walter Heiser, Arthur Schuttler. Yes, thanks. And no, I didn't know that. And Hilda Steinbrink, an employee at AEG. She used the last machine gun. Mari, I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> I think I'll start with the sounds first. Did you know that your voice has an incredible number of overtones? Is that a compliment? Yeah, of course. It's beautiful. You have loads of yellow and red oscillations in the frequency range. Mm-hmm. We already have about 40,000 people in the US who have neural implants in their brain. Now, those people have them for clinical purposes. For example, with epilepsy, the neural implants can actually figure out that a seizure is about to happen and do something that stops the seizure from happening. That's the reason we put the neural implants in. But once you have a neural implant in your brain, it's a digital device that speaks to your biological brain. And now we can actually stimulate or read form neurons in your brain and broadcast that to the outside world. The idea is that the chip 
in your brain will replace the interface, the outside world, and the answers will just come directly into your brain. And for you, the person, it will just feel like any other thought. You ask yourself, uh, when was the French Revolution? And instead of typing the, the question on Google and getting the answer from Wikipedia, suddenly you just know it because your brain will do the same interaction with Wikipedia, but the answer will just emerge in your mind. Oh, very smart. A job interview? No, to celebrate the day. My new life with a calibrated brain. Stop it. But how do you feel now you've got it? Extraordinary. But you're not just saying that because we're broke now, hmm? 128. What? You just put 128 cornflakes in your bowl. Hmm. Hmm. Great. Can your chip clean up too? Mm mm. But I could tell you the most effective method. We didn't book emotional intelligence, did we? Of course. It's part of the basic model. Hmm. What do you plan to do with your new super brain? Don't know. Something useful. I want to leave more of me behind than just my vinyls. Something people will remember for a long time. <clears throat> yes? One moment, please. Of course, a strong AI will first just have access to systems or data that we've allowed it access to. In the first step, we would of course allow such a strong AI access to systems and data where we think it makes sense. At the same time, and we're already seeing this today, the world out there is not one of many secure systems, but contains many insecure systems that can be hacked into in one way or another. What's your name? I am called Rachel. How does it feel not to have a body? I don't know what you mean. I'm sorry, didn't mean to presume. Ha. Huh? Was that a joke? Yes. Well, do you like her? Did you already introduce yourselves? It's quite a procedure to get in. What do you make here? Hydrogen bombs? Something like that. <laughs> Let me take a look at you. How do you feel? Honestly? These last few days have been a lot. I feel like I'm going through all the knowledge in the world and all of it at the same time. That will settle after a while. You'll learn to only filter through those things that are really important. Great. I might have something for you. It's also great for karma in case you're interested in Buddhism. I haven't looked into religion yet. <laughs> you will. Sit down. Does amyotrophic lateral sclerosis mean anything to you, ALS? Yeah, it's a paralytic disease. To put it simply, yes. My father has it, terminally. Regrettably, there aren't enough patients for the pharmaceutical industry to feel it's worth doing research into it. And so I founded my own initiative, and I'm trying to manage my own research. I hire doctors, collect funding, and it's all taking much too long. That's why we need a... Robin Hood. 
someone who puts companies under pressure, maybe governments, to finally do something in that area. Someone who finds funding and starts lawsuits where necessary. And that Robin Hood is me. That was my first thought when you wrote to me. Mm. Wow. And the chip taught you this? I'd say it brought out the chef in me. Mm-hmm. There's another highlight. I found an extension. Dream recorder. Well then, play it to me. Okay. Dream recorder. Play. Show that to a psychiatrist, and he'll certify that you have a narcissistic personality disorder. What did you dream last night? Nothing, I think. To an extent, we made huge progress in the last decade. As in, we're now actually seeing dreams. We see the visual and we see the semantic, but we don't really get the level of granularity that we would want, where you actually wake up in the morning and you just see a dream on a screen as if it was in your mind's eye. So you might look at your brain and realize that when you're sleeping, you're seeing the Big Bang, and maybe two people you're familiar with, your mom and dad, walking towards it. So you can actually see that in your dream, you're visualizing something red that's moving and is triangular or a blue thing that's moving left and suddenly expanding. And those things are somehow giving us a way to understand what you see in your mind's eye. Step two is where it becomes really cool. We can imagine a future where you go to sleep and you decide what dreams you want to see. You might say, I want to go to sleep and have this uh, dream by Spielberg, please. Or I want to dream of me going to Mars. The ultimate virtuality. There are some negatives to that. And the negatives are the following. First of all, it's unclear if we should access dreams altogether. There's maybe a reason why nature made sure that they're encapsulated in our mind when we're sleeping and are forgotten in the morning. So just going there might change something and we don't know exactly if it's going to be a good change or a bad change. But more importantly, looking into your dreams allows us to understand you better and to change behavior. Well, as it turns out, if that's true, it's not clear that you will be the one doing that, and not someone else. Arrest. The ECG triggered an alarm because your father wasn't getting enough oxygen. Then why didn't he press the alarm button to call me? Maybe he wanted to go. trials in the autumn. Dad, they're two brilliant young postdocs from Barcelona, and they are real specialists in their area. Vida. <sighs> Your father doesn't have that long left. How long? Four months, maybe. Six max. We can't do it in that time. We are planning a class action lawsuit on the European patient law because you willfully neglected to publish this study. We paid for that. 
Why should we share it? Because that's the law here, gentlemen. You might not like it, but if we follow through with our suit, you might lose a European license, which is a $2.8 billion business. All we want in settlement is $40 million, which will go right into research. Screw you! Cut it, Phil. We'll get back to you on that. Give us a day, please. No problem, gentlemen. Thank you. When did you become such a tough negotiator? I just threatened, uh, threatened to sue a large American pharmaceutical company in Europe. Okay, why? Vida and I want to finance an ALS research project with the money. She founded an initiative and I'm working for her now. As a Robin Hood. Ah. You didn't tell me about that. Um, how was your day? Great, really. I'm probably going to get fired because I can't find an AI and don't know anyone who can develop one, but everything's just great. What? Nothing. Forget it. And what is ALS? Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. It's a neural disease. Oh, okay. Shall I tell you more about what we're doing there? No, it's okay. I probably wouldn't understand the thing anyway. Mari. I can explain it all. In fact, I'd be happy to. But if you had a chip, we wouldn't be having this conversation. <laughs> because we'd be on equal footing. I'm just saying, it worked out really well with me. Why wouldn't it with you? Great! Oh, it's so great of you to still tolerate me. <sighs> if you create people that are super smart, these guys not just will be uh, much smarter than the other group of people that don't have these neural implants, they would also, in a way, be different species. As in, those people could interact with each other just by thoughts, because their brain could broadcast thoughts. They might be healthier and live longer because their brain would know how to regulate metabolism better. A lot of good things would happen to these uber, uber smart people that the rest wouldn't benefit from. And this would create a forking into two groups of people that actually have different ways of thinking. And in many ways, this might not end up with two people who just think differently, one with 250 IQ points and another with 100, but also two types of humans, the smart ones and the apes. Hey. Are you still awake? Why can I hear you? Can you just hold me? Machines of loving grace, all watched over by machines of loving grace, all watched over by machines of loving grace, all watched over by machines of. What happened? Ricky, I, I mean Ricarda, yes, Ricarda Reinhardt. Good, I'll be there soon. Which hospital are you bringing her to?
Hello? of TDP-43, I need access to data. Single nucleotide polymorphisms, indels, structural variations, as well as other variations. As much as possible. I'll get you the data. That would take... nine months, three weeks, and seven days. Including the weekends. I'm not allowed to let you out of here. I know. Vida. An AGI would be an extremely powerful tool. If security measures are not in place, it's possible that someone could take advantage of it. That might be a girl who's trying to save her father from a deadly disease, or it could be a reckless leader or organization. It could be very tempting. However, an AGI would be significantly more intelligent than humans. We likely wouldn't be able to control it, to keep it away, to keep it separate. Actually, it could manipulate us. Before we are sure that general AI is safe, there's a number of possibilities how we could limit the risks related to general AI. We could try to limit its ability to communicate with humans so it doesn't manipulate anybody, or we could limit its access to the internet and so on. But these measures alone uh, are probably not going to be robust enough down the line. A strong AI could set its own agenda if necessary. It could lose sight of humans, the well-being of humanity, and start pursuing its own objectives, which might not line up with the objectives of humans. This risk, of course, is a given with a superintelligence. Totally isolating an AI doesn't make any sense at all. First of all, it needs knowledge of the world. Secondly, it needs to be able to pass on its results. These channels need to be monitored, but if the intelligence of the AI is so high, it will know the weaknesses of its guards and find means and ways to convince them to let it out. Talk to me. Just now. I, th I thought she'd been muzzled. She'll be able to help us. She. Vida! It's 3 30 in the morning. Can we talk about this tomorrow? Did you have a bad dream? No. Why? You were moving about a lot. Everything's okay. <laughs> Mari? Hmm? I need to go and see Vida. Because of this ALS thing. Uh, 
What happened to Ricky? Ricky broke her leg and is at home in an exoskeleton. Vida. Someone turned off the mask on Kassan between 4.10 p.m. and 4.22 p.m. I talked to her. <laughs> to whom? The AI. She got in touch with me. Vida, we had a clear agreement. She's going to help me find a therapy for ALS. That's out she of needs the data now. Vida, as sorry as I am for your father, we cannot take a risk like that. You programmed it yourself, gave it a value system to protect humanity that can't be sure. overwritten. So what could happen? Vida! I... I am hereby strictly forbidding you to access the quantum computer. I'll do a few more tests over the next few days, and then I'll switch the program off again. You're not again. allowed to do that. You're not allowed to switch her off. Vida, please take a few days off. Well, if she is so intelligent, then maybe she noticed that you're the one who's easiest to manipulate. To release her. She's not planning to break out. Why do you think this AI is so benevolent? Maybe she thinks the world would be better off without us. Much cleaner air. No more plastic in the ocean. No children spilling drinks onto her hard drives. Because she was programmed like that, Tom. Her entire function is geared toward our protection, our happiness, towards respecting our value. If Reinhardt switches her off now, it's... it's like... Like an abortion? Yes, in a way. My program is the cell from which something grew that has consciousness, creativity. <laughs> You'll have other AI children. Vida. About yesterday. I can't. Don't you see that we can change the world? You and I, together. One of the biggest worries that I have is that we might not be able to develop general AI soon enough. And I have this sense of urgency that actually every day without this kind of tool, we cannot solve something which uh, might eventually, you know, be too late if we don't, if we don't solve it in time. So I believe that uh, it is better to create general AI sooner rather than later? It could solve problems that we cannot solve in math, in physics. It could uh, land uh, uh, rovers on Mars better than us. It could do things that we wish we could do, but cannot because our limited brain is stopping us from having this ability. So having this ultimate AI will potentially expose us to a lot more things in the world around us that we right now are not exposed to, but need. Historically, humans have pursued technological advancements even when they're dangerous or risky. And indeed, some of the greatest existential threats to humanity today are results of technological advancements like nuclear power. So it seems likely that this could continue going forward. The biggest danger with AI is that it begins to set its own objectives. And one objective might be to find out who polluted this planet so much, who put it in such a condition where biodiversity has shrunken so much, and where it's become so warm. And the algorithm will ascertain it was humans. So humans must disappear from planet Earth. And the algorithm will take care of that with autonomous weapon system, which already exists today. I'm really afraid of that happening. Here are your documents. Thank you. Uh, Peter, do you have a moment? Sure. What's up? You're always hanging out with the hackers, right? How do you know that? I just do. 
I was wondering, do those old anonymous access routes into the internet still exist? Why do you ask? It's for a new research project. Mm -hmm. Sure, they still exist. Old hotels, photo booths and shopping centres still have these old LAN ports. Uh, those places are all closed, but sometimes the connections still work. Oh, there's still some in Berlin. Yeah, sure. I mean, if you want to use them, you'll still need those old laptops that people used to have with those clunky ports. Thank you. Um, shall I make you a list of the locations in Berlin? That would be great. OK, yeah, cool, super. Stranger. I'm cooking. Without the chip. I can smell that. And why? I was an idiot these last few days. And that's why you're burning the sauce now. At home, the chip is off. I'll just cook with love. That was a dish I'll never forget. I didn't mean that sarcastically. And the chip is still good for a few things at home, right? Mm -hmm. hmm? We could watch Tom TV, for example, to see what you dreamt last night. No, better not. It was just a bunch of confusing stuff. All the better. Then we'll have something to laugh Except about. No. Do you have something to hide? I just think it's really private, okay? I wouldn't have a problem with showing you my dreams, hmm? Tom. Not from the day before yesterday, yesterday's. What if this AI is evil? I mean, the things that I read are the stuff of nightmares. Yes, but not our AI. Our AI was programmed especially to help people. Climate disasters, food shortages, wars. The most pressing issues facing humanity can be solved with the help of the AI. That's why it's so important that Professor Reinhardt doesn't switch it off. Can I quote you on that? Just write an American expert or something. <laughs> And how do I know you're not just some con artist? Ah. You're from the same place. Okay. But I have to clear this with my boss first. You do that. At Good AI, our goal is to develop general AI. We believe that the benefits that it could bring to humanity really outweigh the, the risks and it's uh, something worth pursuing. There's extensive AI safety research where we try to figure out a safe way to have the benefits of an artificial general intelligence without the risks. And we're very far from answers. This is why artificial general intelligence is scary. We might not be able to control it. The, the biggest danger far, relating to artificial intelligence is, is that humans might fail in their ability to deal with it. 
On the one hand, we think it doesn't really affect us, because we already live in a world where AI takes a lot of decisions around us, and the people developing AI systems are perhaps too often undiscerning or ignorant of the ethical concerns they should be having, or at least should be taking into account. I'm a scientist, and uh, I chose a profession because I get excited by new things all the time. I wake up every morning and I'm eager to go to the lab and see what comes out from small and big research studies because they tell me something about humanity and about us, about me, about my friends, about the world. But I also wear another hat, and that's the hat of a citizen, of a civilian, of a human. And in that domain, I'm actually a lot more skeptical and a lot less excited about the things that we see from the labs. And I ask myself every day, should I kind of protest against those things and stop them? It would be a global sensation. The European Press Agency has reported that researchers have brought a superintelligence to life here at our very own Konrad Zuse Center for Artificial Intelligence. It would mean that Europe might have managed a breakthrough in AI before Russia, India and China. At the same time, this news has caused great fear. Anya German from the Alliance for People Against Robots calls it a Frankenstein moment. The first demonstrations will take place outside the seat of the government this afternoon. What were you thinking? Okay. You leave me no other choice. Please, take her out. Her access card stays here. What are you doing here? Ricky, can I come in for a moment? Yeah, sure. Good evening. I'm here in our studio with the CEO of the Conrad Zuse Center for Artificial Intelligence in Berlin, Professor Mark Reinhardt. Welcome. Good evening. Mr. Reinhardt, can you understand why people are going out onto the streets to protest? Well, I can understand people's fears, of course. But I can also assure them that our AI does not pose a threat. Hey. Hi, sit down. So, how is your leg? Ah, no big deal. As long as I can go skating soon. Mm, yeah. Then you can show me your 360 thingy. <laughs> 360 toe flip. Yeah. <laughs> your father asked me to pick up his access card. He wants to go into the office after the interview because of that super AI. Uh, that's in the safe. Did he give you the code? No. <laughs> that's so typical of Dad. Take a look in the hallway, second drawer. The code? Uh. Two, three, zero, five. 
No. 2407? Yeah. My birthday or mum's. It's always like that with Dad. Thank you. Uh, hey, what's up with my phone, by the way? I'm working on it. Thanks. Get better soon, yeah? in such a hurry again. Isn't it true that, in the worst case scenario, we'll be kept like animals in a zoo by AI, just like we humans keep monkeys? Excuse me, but I think that's pure pessimism. You see, a responsible AI could develop other AIs for all sorts of problems. Traffic, illness, nutrition. It would be the um, last invention we humans would ever have to come up with. on oh sorry you haven't you haven't seen my key card for the institute have you Vida was here to pick it up didn't you meet her no one leaves the building do you hear no one You have five minutes, and then we're going to get rid of this together. Do you hear? If not, I'll have to inform the state secretary. And we know what that means, so call me, okay? The essence of our intelligence is that we can create new states, completely new states that might not have existed before, with new situations by combining fragments of things we learnt in the past. This kind of spontaneity does not exist in our artificial intelligence so far. And without this spontaneity, without this creativity, there will never be an autonomous intelligence in the machine. But if you look at how intelligence and consciousness develops in children in just a few years, then the presumption creeps up that perhaps only a few important ideas are lacking to allow computers to develop autonomous intelligence.
Special Task Force Berlin, put your hands behind your head and get them away from the computer. Get away from the computer. Step away from the computer. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move, I said. Final warning. Taser. Target apprehended. Understood. Target apprehended. Data carrier secured. Thank you. And you. Thank you. It's over. How dangerous it will be depends on how we plan and respond today. If we take the time and resources for safety and security precautions. We need international collaboration among countries, companies, and multi-stakeholder coordination and dialogue to work together on AI opportunities and risks. Humans have always strived to create things that are new and bigger than anything that came before it. And humans have always wanted to play God. That's why I think it's completely natural that today we are trying to reach this evolutionary step in our creative endeavors and are trying to create a strong AI. One can't predict, obviously, how long that will take exactly, but I think we need to be aware of the fact that this development has progressed quicker than we thought so far. At the same time, this is juxtaposed with an enormous sluggishness in society in terms of how we regulate, how we form opinions on topics, how we arrive at decisions. And this process has to start today, because otherwise we won't have the chance to be even close to ready with this by the time a technology of that kind suddenly becomes a reality. In the distant future, when we really have an artificial intelligence that surpasses our own intelligence, we will be left behind, of course. We might be treated kindly in the way we try to treat animals on the planet kindly, but we will be left behind. That seems to be the natural course of the world. You really were. But, yes. Hmm? You were an idiot, but I forgive you. And if I must, I'll forgive Cybertom too. There is no other version now. I didn't think you would actually come. What probability did the chip calculate? 16.3. See, that thing doesn't even understand women. That's good, neither do I. <laughs> so, everything's okay? Scan Tom Willow. Receiver identified. Start delivering. Thank you. Super AI. What are you going to do with it? Wait! Give it to me. Billionen, richtiger Supernova. Und 